Hello and welcome, I'm Alice Garjuk and you're watching Head to Head with UATV. The District Administrative Court of Kyiv ruled that the nationalization of the biggest bank in Ukraine, Privat Bank, was illegal. The judges satisfied the claim of oligarch Ihor Kolomoisky, its former co-owner, against the National Bank of Ukraine. Back in 2016, Kolomoisky's Privat Bank was nationalized by the Ukrainian government for being insolvent. To talk more about this case and other financial news, we welcome to our studio Maxim Presnikov, Ukrainian economist and former CEO of Logitech in Ukraine. Hello and thank you for coming today. Hello. So let's start with some kind of chronology and let's just explain mm -hmm. our audience that uh, the Privat Bank is the biggest bank in Ukraine. It has the biggest amount of clients. Basically, almost every Ukrainian is the client of Privat Bank. And uh, oligarch Ihor Kolomoisky used to be a co-owner of this bank, as I mentioned in the introduction. So um, back in September last year, the District Administrative Court of Kyiv confirmed uh, this decision of the National Bank to uh, categorize Privet Bank as insolvent. Mm -hmm. And now, in April, half a year uh, later, it mm, basically mm, denies this um, and um, releases the statement that National Bank of Ukraine, the uh, Ministry of Finance and also the Guarantee Fund for Individuals um, uh, could not provide enough grounds uh, for the court to recognize private bank as insolvent. Mm -hmm. So what is this all about? Well, first of all, you are absolutely right that private, uh, private bank was the biggest one in Ukraine and actually while talking about the number of people who was in somehow dealing with private bank, in total it was 22 million. So it's almost half of half official of, half of the half of official population of Ukraine. But if you're talking about people over a certain age, I would say that it's more than I don't know, 75 or 80 percent of uh, pr of population of Ukraine was yeah, dealing of somehow who can of adults actually who can obtain actually bank account. Bank, yeah, absolutely, was in deal with private bank, and actually it was running very valuable part of financial system of Ukraine. And it was one of the biggest bank, I don't, I don't think only in Ukraine, but maybe in former U uh, Soviet Union as well. And actually, uh, the decision about nationalization of private bank, it was a very uh, important, it was really an important one, because otherwise it was a threat for the whole economy of Ukraine. It was a threat, it was because a threat, yeah, the, the capital was negative in private bank? Uh, after a certain level of investigation, an uh, international auditor said yes. And that was an issue actually for Mr. Kolomoisky. He was saying that it's not true. Yeah. And that he keeps there saying was, that there, are, that there, there was a certain level of assets. Two still, billion dollars. And it was confiscated, but it's, it's still in the court. So, but coming back in the history, actually, it starts not in 2016, it was even before 2014, 2015, when it was first signs that there were some issues with private, uh, private bank. And there were some remarks from National Bank that there is a threat that that could be some uh, really some problems, financial problems, and they were putting their eye on what is going on, actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a strange situation because even after such a comment, um, international auditors confirmed that some amount were transferred from Privat Bank to some companies, offshore companies, and the total amount was confirmed something like $2 billion. It was already after the National Bank uh, has some comments as for the potential problems with private bank. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, it, it's still a question why didn't they take any action? So it was comments from their side, but there were no action, no control over finances. Uh, and so no uh, there is uh, some suspicion of fraud, as far as I understand, uh, of this yeah, 2 billion absolutely. US dollars being transferred, as far as I understand, yeah, illegally yeah. In to total, some offshore in total, companies. In total, we are talking about a gap of 5.5 uh, 5 .5 billion dollars in total, mm -hmm. as a total gap. But what was transferred after the comments from National Bank, it's almost 2 billion. So we can have more savings actually on our side if there were more control from National Bank. Mm -hmm. But still, it's happened already. And actually what we have right now, it's, uh, in fact, Mr. Kolomoisky, he didn't want his bank uh, back. back, actually. The comment from his side was that he would be satisfied if he get uh, two billions a kind of compensation. Those yes. assets which he confirmed and he thought uh, that they are still in 
private bank and was confiscated. From national bank uh, and from state, right now state-owned private bank, the comment was that it's not true. And on the contrary, there, went, there was no the, $2 billion. Yeah, yes. there were no money. And on the contrary, they would like to get from Mr. Kolomoisky compensation for these several more billions. Mm -hmm. And actually, uh, it's not only about Ukrainian court. It was a story with uh, court in London. And actually, it was even a case that uh, Mr. Kolomoisky had a problem with the rest of his assets with, that was arrested worldwide for a period, certain period of time. But after that, what, I don't know what actually happened. And Cart in London said that it's not under their jurisdiction. And they said, OK, guys, you should solve this within Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And you should decide who's right, who's wrong in Ukrainian court. And what we got after, what we got actually after that, it was a decision that uh, this nationalization was illegal. Uh, I cannot explain why. But what I heard, it's about some technical mistakes in the process, which uh, actually gave a potential reason for the court decide that it was illegal. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I, uh, what, what should we do as the citizens of Ukraine? Definitely no panic. Uh, it's not the end of the story. And Can it bear any risk? Right now, no, uh, right now I, I wouldn't say so because it's not... For the uh, clients? Uh, yeah, for the clients, it's no, right now there are no risks because it's only start of the process. It's only first stage. We will have few more actually. It will and be, appeals and different yeah, hearings and yeah, maybe yeah, it will absolutely. go until Supreme Court. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it will take definitely not few days, not even few months. The, I think it's about years. And in my opinion, this, this move from Mr. Kolomoisky, it was not about to get bank back actually or to get even some compensation back. It's more about to protect other of his assets outside of Ukraine mm -hmm. and to avoid the situation that National Bank and right now state-owned private bank will try to get compensation from his side. Let's just compare the positions. Kolomoisky claims that uh, the bank obtained two billion, around two billion US dollars as capital um, mm -hmm. at the moment of nationalization in 2016. Um, the National Bank of Ukraine claims that the capital was negative and that uh, basically um, the state had become the, gar the, guarant the, the guarantor of fulfilling all obligations to the bank clients and also for saving the funds of the citizens. How much did the country invest uh, in the bank? Mm -hmm. In total, if we calculate the total amount which actually country invest, it's in grievance, it's about 150 billions of grivna. It, it's total kind of investments of Ukraine mm -hmm. in, in the bank right now. I was and actually calculating according to the National Bank currency rate and it's around 6 billion US dollars if oh, we calculate in yeah, dollars. Right, I mean, right, we right compare 5.5, 5.6, it was a previous discussion, so it's almost 150. But what the problem is that it was not real money actually. Uh, but what could happen if the court decided that bank should be returned to Mr. Kronomoisky, meaning that uh, those actually right now clients of the bank will have to get compensation from the state. And then we are talking about real money, which Ukraine will have to invest, will have to pay to the clients of the bank. To the and clients this one, of the bank? Yes. What for? Uh, because if it will be decided that the bank uh, is going to be bankrupt, uh, there is a fund of... Uh, you know, guarantees uh, we should pay actually. Guarantee fund for guarantee individuals. Fund. Yes, yes, absolutely. And in that case, uh, Ukraine as a state will have to pay this money. The compensation. Yes, absolutely. The lost and, money, and basically. And this is in total calculation at least 100 billion grivnas that should be paid after that. Mm -hmm. And this will definitely put a pressure on uh, exchange rate. For sure. And on Ukraine's economy probably. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, I would like to ask you another thing. Um, your opinion. Um, basically, the court has issued the sentence against the state. So basically, the state is against the state. So um, uh, is it more about Ukraine becoming democratic in practice and having this practical um, um, judiciary reform in action, or is it more about um, Kolomoisky's maybe a sphere of influence? influence. And we know that it's um, many people. Um, they basically accused that uh, the, one of the candidates, presidential candidates, um, basically the winner, Volodymyr mm -hmm. Zelensky, uh, who has his business connected and he is working for Kolomoisky TV channel, uh, that he could. I mean that this is connected to presidential election and uh, maybe um, this is all like the continuing of the game. You know, I would love to say that this is the first case that we uh, that this is about more democratic country that 
its independence of our court, about our system and how it works. But I would say that the more chances, it's about the second case. And, and is it a revenge to Poroshenko? Because uh, we know that Kolomoisky and Poroshenko Yeah, and the promise was that there enemies. will be such a wrench and he will get his bank back. But as I said, I don't think that this will lead actually to the fact that the bank will be returned to Mr. Kolomoisky. It's more like decision to protect his assets abroad. And I really don't think that the final decision will be in his favor. Mm -hmm. Because there is, worldwide, there is no such a case, actually. Well, he wants to protect his assets abroad. This is completely understandable. But we are talking about the risks that are um, that Ukraine might face. President, incumbent President Petro Poroshenko called this a venture and a threat that tens of millions of clients can lose their money and that the country well you said that yeah. the clients basically will not lose the, their the money in the majority of the clients will not because it's about certain level of compensation yes and that the country um, can be can be drowned in a new economic crisis and can face default is it well, true or is it exaggerated uh, this, this actually could be mm -hmm. Uh, but as I said, I don't expect that the final decision will be in favor of Mr. Kolomoisky. Uh, and one actually additional reason why I think so, it's about uh, International Monetary Fund. One of the actually clear statements from their side, it was about nationalization of private, of private bank. And uh -huh, they, so this was one of the Ukrainians' obligation? It was not a kind of obligation, it was a comment from their side, that they support the idea. It was not officially obligation for Ukraine, or it was not officially a request from International from Monetary IMF. Fund, but mm -hmm. it was confirmed from their, side, the, from their side that it's a right move, and they support the idea. And actually, if there is certain changes, and if uh, Privat Bank is returned to Mr. Kolomoisky, I would say that it put a pressure on our further cooperation with International Monetary Fund. And we really depend on them right now, because this year and next year, actually, we have a lot of payments, and if we don't have support from International Monetary Fund, well, in that case, our economy really Might under certain pressure. Absolutely. Difficulties, yeah, because we're paying debt this year, right? Uh, yes, this year and actually the next one. Mm -hmm. What about this standby arrangement, uh, the, this new program uh, of assistance uh, from the IMF that was uh, launched in December 2018? Uh, we know that uh, Ukraine has been waiting for the next tranche, uh, 1.3 billion US dollars, which was scheduled for May, and the next one, the last one, for November of this year. Um, can we rely on this schedule, or are we awaiting some changes and some unexpected circumstances? You know, we don't have official reply from uh, IMF yet, and you are absolutely right. We have uh, several payments scheduled for May and uh, closer to the end of the year, and actually one of the reasons is because in May, in September, we have two months with really very high level of payments. In May, it's 2.9 million and over 2 billion in uh, September. And previously, the idea was that in May, we should receive this money from IMF and also from World Bank. Uh, we don't hear official position from IMF yet, but what I heard unofficially, let's say this way, is that in fact, in May, we will not receive the money. Why it's so? not yet confirmed Either it will be completely cancelled or just postponed for June, July. But for 95%, we will not receive uh, money in May. Because Ukraine doesn't comply with the obligation? Uh, with some obligations, plus uh, there was an issue with uh, cancellation of this anti-corruption uh, with anti-corruption declaration. This. Uh, uh, electronic criminal. declarations and also with this an uh, illegal enrichment maybe yeah yeah absolutely so uh, and okay. it, the discussion was that uh, one of the reasons it was about this and the second was that ukraine didn't fulfill some other obligations again it's not official position of imf and i cannot confirm this officially yet mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. this is what i heard from different different at least three different sources uh, which means that the possibility of this is really high unfortunately mm -hmm. If the next tranche is being postponed, let's not think about worst case scenario, about cancelled, the word cancelled shouldn't be used right now, if it's going to be postponed, um, 
uh, is it bearing any threat to the Ukrainian economy right now and maybe to the currency rate? Because we have been observing since the start of this year, I don't know whether it was connected with the election campaign or not, but the currency rate was lower yeah. than before. And now, um, in the period of elections, it has fallen even more. Um, how would you evaluate this currency rate and this fall, this this difference, and um, what can you forecast for us? And how the well can this actually can the situation with the IMF, uh, maybe with the presidential election, influence the currency rate? Well, you know, if you're trying to forecast in Ukraine the exchange rate, it's not a good story because there are so many things which might influence and. You it, it's about internal things, about external things, about cooperation with Too many IMF. Things. Okay, it's let's about focus only on these Worldwide potential, two. worldwide crisis, so whatever. Uh, what is good? Elections, actually, elections is over, and nothing bad has happened because we heard a lot of forecasts, especially in social networks, that the next day after election, the exchange rate would be 30, 40, 50. It doesn't case. It doesn't happen actually, and it's positive sign. Uh, definitely, if we don't have this money from IMF in May, it could put a certain pressure on exchange rate. But again, I wouldn't say that it will go over, I don't know, over 30, over 35, whatever. Maybe okay, few so this percent, is cooperation with the IMF. Yeah, maybe a mm -hmm. few percent, but that's it. It's not such a huge pressure. But what is bad, it's not only badly, it's not only about cooperation with IMF, it's actually about cooperation with other financial institutions. If we don't have uh, money from IMF, means that it will be more difficult for Ukraine to get money from, from, other, from investors. other investors, absolutely. And in case of payments, we will have to go for the market searching for the money, to borrow mm -hmm. money, unfortunately. So this and reflects... it will be much more difficult to borrow money first, and we will get higher interest rate second. And in a certain period of time, definitely, this will reflect in somehow on our exchange rate as well. Mm -hmm. So we will see the reaction, but not immediately, let's say in this way. So this reflects on Ukraine's attractiveness among the yeah, international absolutely. partners and investors. Um, okay, um, what about the presidential election as an issue to keep the currency rate low, intentionally? Well, I wouldn't say that president elections will influence a lot. So what we saw already, the, the, the rate is pretty stable. And it's not about president elections or it's not about elections we'll, which we are going to have in October. It's more about cooperation with, as I said, with IMF. It's more about uh, internal economy. It's more about uh, financial aspects. Not, financial aspects. Not, not it's not more about uh, markets worldwide. It's about price on commodities. It's about potential war between China and US. So it's a lot of potential influencers on exchange rate in Ukraine, except of Ukraine by itself. Mm -hmm. Definitely we have National Bank, which is trying to support, and we have pretty good reserve right now with National Bank of Ukraine, but they are also limited in, in the way and in those monetary tools they can use to stabilize the exchange rate right now. Mm -hmm. And let's just uh, come back to this discussion about the private bank, the very last question, also the currency rate and the private bank. Uh, we were talking about the negative scenario that this can reflect uh, on Ukraine's economy, maybe cause some um, new financial crisis mm -hmm. or as worst case scenario default. So if we're talking about this, if we uh, refer to President Petro Poroshenko and the risks that he is emphasizing on, uh, how could this situation, this scandal around private bank uh, could potentially reflect on the currency rate? Uh, well, if we are talking only about this uh, scandal mm -hmm. and if we are talking that there will be no further steps, no decision to return private bank, <laughs> Uh, I wouldn't expect that the influence will be huge. But in case, really, uh, if there is a decision to make some kind of compensation for Mr. Kolomoisky or return bank to Mr. Kolomoisky, which I personally doubt that it's the case, but still, let's imagine that it, this could happen. Yeah. Then definitely that would be a huge pressure on exchange rate, simply because of uh, we, uh, because Ukraine will have to pay uh, this compensation to clients. And second, because it will put under the question our further cooperation with uh, IMF. And definitely this will put a pressure on our cooperation with other financial markets. And in that case, yes, there would be a pressure. 
and actually in that case I wouldn't even try to predict what could be the exchange rate. Maybe in that exact case it could be 30 plus and even more. Mm -hmm. Well, let's wait for the new statements from the IMF and maybe in May before actually uh, deciding whether to issue Ukraine a new trench or not. Maybe there is going to be some mission operating here. Uh, so far, I thank you for this valuable and practical information that you shared with us. Thank you. That was economist Maxim Prasnikov. Thank you for watching Head to Head and stay tuned for more with UATV.